Well, hello, my Likans. Welcome to another episode of the newsletter that is also a podcast and morning. I hope you cannot hear um, or not match my squeaky chair and my neighbors playing the cello and, and all the other things. My cats uh, complaining. Um, I'm trying to not edit, at least not too much, this. Um, it's hard because every time I do things like this, or I say, uh, I, I usually cut it and it's, it's, a, it's a pain <laughs> doing that. So yes, um, let's, let's try this out. Okay, this one is titled Love, Breath, Glitter. And the first section is titled Love, Breath, Bra Brassier Table. I'm not even sure that <laughs> that's um, the correct pronunciation, but um, Brassier Table, Brassier, I, I don't know, B R A C T I. E R and then table. <laughs> okay. So uh, last Friday I went to Madrid to attend the official Primer Premio de Poesía Le Traversal Award presentation, which is the first Le Traversal Poetry Prize. Um, there I was able to congratulate the winner in person, Paula Melchor, whose collection Amoripan is on its third printing, which is uh, totally amazing and great uh, for a poem collection, especially. Congratulations! So my friend Victor, uh, Victor, <laughs> so weird saying his name in, in an English accent, Victor uh, <laughs> took the hint when I said on social media what I would like as a birthday present since I didn't win the Le Traversal pack of books, why not giving them to me now, um, right, as a birthday present? And he bought me Paula's book for... yes, as a present. So, uh, La Parrala was the most voted finalist with her manuscript Mesa Camilla, that quite literally means <laughs> brassier table, still not sure if that's how you say it, but it's one of those small, usually round tables that have four legs and they have a space um, below at the center for putting heating systems, usually um, like old timey, <laughs> uh, where for coal. So yeah, maybe now you know what I mean. <laughs> I think it's a hell of a poem collection title. Yeah, uh, I cannot be angry at them winning because uh, the poems they shared on Le Traversal's um, social media were stunning. So yeah, congratulations to, to La Parrala. Um, Oh, uh, Paula Melchor, um, on my petition, of course, uh, wrote me a dedication on her book. And in English, it would say something like, For Miriam, in the hopes that my words feed you and I can see your book in a bookshelf soon. Paula. That was so wholesome <laughs> of her. Um, that made me very happy. And later, I wasn't neither able to resist the urge to get myself a copy of Desde las Gradas, which is Juan P. Sánchez, Juan P. Sánchez's <laughs> um, poem collection from La Traversal to. Uh, thanks, Victor, again, Victor, <laughs> for pestering me endlessly um, with this fucking delicacy of a collection. Four months, uh, yes, I'm serious, uh, it's it's truly an amazing book. And 
Juan P. drew a few meteorites around his dedication for me and we have to love him as he is, you know. <laughs> I also had the chance to talk to Angelo Nestore, who is Le Traversal's editor, who, upon learning I was the human behind the pseudonym Lady Klaus, um, that's the, the name I used to send um, the cognosis, my manuscript, uh, he, she, sorry, gave me a hug and assured me that my book is getting published somewhere sometime soon because, and this is precisely what she said, it is a book that needs to be published and it's going to be published. <laughs> I don't know how to synthesize uh, how, how good that felt. So I'm just saying thank you and I still have glitter on my blazer and oh, it was very lovely. <laughs> so next section, coming of book. Now I'm going to talk a bit about Please Come Off Book, um, Kevin Cantor's first poem collection. Uh, they are another button poetry author, which is the, the publishing house I know through Neil Hilborn, because he he's published there. And what else? Um, oh. If you'd like to check out the analysis uh, or deep reading I did of this and another poem from Please Come Off Book, uh, please uh, subscribe to my Patreon for as little as one euro or one fifty dollars a month and you will see everything I share there exclusively. And yeah, pretty please, it would be awesome if you're in a position to help me out. Yeah, so I'm going to read you one of those poems now. Dress Rehearsal, My Grandfather's Funeral, by Kevin Cantor. Oh, by the way, um, trigger warning for death and transphobia. Yeah, again. Dress Rehearsal, My Grandfather's Funeral by Kevin Cantor. What to wear to a funeral when a suit wears you like a casket, an ironed remainder of what they might try to bury you in. What to wear to a funeral when what you there wear might be what would get you killed. I'd like to say this ending is an hyperbole, but uh, we know it is not this does happen. There are people on the trans spectrum, like Kevin Cantor here, who is gender non-binary, um, who are assaulted and murdered just for existing, for supposedly wearing the wrong gender's clothes, the ones supposedly of exclusive use for one gender, and... <laughs> oh, uh, sorry about my cat. He's <laughs> I don't know why why he's calling me now. Yeah, try try to ignore him. He's he's fine, okay? Just trying to get my attention. So yeah, uh, I'm not only recommending Please Come Off Book um because of um <laughs> because um it will give you um real perspective of the queer existence, especially trans existence, although that's a good reason. Um, but I'm also recommending it because how cleverly it uses dramatic concepts to revise real situations, which is basically what Cantor does in this re dress rehearsal. It's a revision of a real moment, a funeral attending dress code based on gender normati normativity that made the author feel like dying and that's something that shouldn't happen anymore. So this literary, sorry, this literary tool helps us see more clearly how strange and absurd this common 
quite common moment is. Okay, third section. Following people outside Twitter. And I, I know uh, this may sound like a paid... Um, um, what's the word? A paid ad, but it is not. I just like this app. So, <laughs> I'm recommending you Storygraph, um, which is an alternative to Goodreads. And in case you didn't know, Goodreads is a platform where you can track your readings, list the books you'd like to read, mark the ones you've read, and the only problem with good readings is that the owner is, is Jeffrey Bezos, and Bob Barnum has already warned us to stay as far away as possible from that being. Um, if you don't remember, you can just um, go to YouTube and look for Bob Barnum's Bezos 1 video. Uh, so yeah, that, that explains it, basically. <laughs> so yeah, if you'd like to, to see what I'm reading and what I would like to read, you can follow me on storygraph.com slash profile slash medium uh, oh damn, I don't know how to say das, like the, the das that is down below. <laughs> Give me a moment, I will try to not edit this out. Trying to boost my confidence as a podcaster. Okay, raya baja. Underscore, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to follow me on Storygraph, uh, you can go to storygraph.com slash profile slash Miriam underscore Navarro underscore Prieto. Uh -huh. <laughs> and there you'll be able to, to be nosy about what I'm reading and what I'm going to read next. Next up. Point five, little things and proto -baticaos. I know you don't know probably what that is, but um, let me explain it in a bit. So, you know, every Wednesday, Neil Hilborn asks us to follow one or two writing prompts in his circle. And this was one from a few months ago. Focus on something small we use every day to appease or amuse or or make ourselves feel more secure. And here's what I wrote that day. And let's say this is also the plant part of this issue. <laughs> Oath to the single ounce of dark chocolate. You, black square of sourness. You, body of pleasure I dare put on my tongue. You, dainty craving my warmth your sweet tooth for my pulse around you, lay yourself with your worries, pray for these moss not to close, you patron of your own undoing, you hope for the flat to take you, fully knowing my impatience, I am rendered helpless by your not fast enough becoming of myself. So, according to Wikipedia, and this is funny because I found it on the English article, not in the Spanish one. Let me let me quote. Coco, pronounced by the Olmecs as cacao, the word chocolate entered the English language from Spanish in about 1600s. The word entered Spanish from the word chocolatel in Nahuatl, the language of the Aztecs. The origin of the Nahuatl word is uncertain, as it does not appear in any early Nahuatl source, where the word for chocolate drink is cacahuatl, cocoa water. It is possible that the Spaniards coined the word, perhaps in order to avoid caca, a vulgar Spanish word for feces, by combining the Yucatec Mayan word chocol, hot with the Nahuatl word atel, water. <coughs> uh, okay, 
uh, in the Spanish article, <laughs> there's a theory I enjoy because it says, according to English missionary Thomas Gage, who mentioned chocolate in 1648, the term would come from an onomatopoeia since choc, uh, written X-O-C, would mimic the sound the drink made when shaken in its container before serving it. Okay, I highly doubt the word chocolate comes from the sound the proto Vaticao made, but what do I know? Okay, now I explain what the fuck is a uh, Vaticao. <laughs> so it was, a, well, it still is um, a recipient that came with big Colacao boxes, which is a um, cocoa powder, Spanish label, label, and you were supposed to put the milk and the powder in it, then push and pull a handle at the top of the container and that shook the drink like a teenager in a gravitron. <laughs> yeah, um, let's, let's move on. Uh, five things I've been enjoying. De Todas Las Flores is um, almost the only thing I've been listening um, these last few weeks is Natalia Lafourcade's last album and I just started listening to her and the interview happened and I died of secondhand same. Um, is it secondhand embarrassment? Could be. So um, I'll try to contextualize it but you don't even know you don't even need to know much about that, about it, and I'm not looking it up on YouTube because I don't want to add to the visits. So, um, okay, there's a late night show TV host that thinks himself funny, but half of the time is just another late night TV show host, and the other half is making the same two fucking questions again and again to any um, a guest, uh, like how much money do you have on your bank account and <clears throat> something sexual that's totally out of place. And I told myself while writing the newsletter I wouldn't write about this too much, but I cannot help <laughs> mentioning how he referred to cis head boring sex as normal sex. And just let me tell you, dear boy, one, normal sex doesn't exist, two, if there's not a penis involved in it, um, it doesn't mean it's not real sex, and that's all for now because I only teach English. So let's push, put this aside. Um, okay, um, so the Todas las Flores starts with a song that's called Vino Solita, and the first words in it, um, and I translated um, everything myself. I came into this world alone, alone I'm going to live. Or alone I'm going to die would be more precise maybe. Then almost at the end of the track list there is a poem um, a poem dash uh, party, I, I called it, <laughs> put against brass and distorted guitar chords. Um, that one is the song Muerte, and it has uh, amazing verses like After dying my war, today I'm reborn grateful. Then um, I don't know how many times I have recently, recently found myself quietly singing to myself the song um, Maria la Curandera, especially this part that says, let, the, let them turn to dust, let every pain turn to dust, let the fire take them, let the fire take them and new flowers come. And how magical to have Maria the Healer's spell sprouting out of me. And if you speak Spanish, I 
or if you understand Spanish, I urge you to go to Spotify and look for the podcast and La Furcade is publishing. And there is an episode about this song, Maria La Curandera, and it's pretty cool. And yeah, that is all. Thank you to my newsletter and podcast listeners and readers. And thank you especially to my patrons. Larry, Jorge, Rufi, Lucia, Chelsea, Kat Dufou, Katia, Ari, Manuel. You're all the very bestest. And people, um, if you haven't subscribed yet to this newsletter, you can do so on tinyletter.com slash Miriam. Uh, I forgot what was the word for <laughs> for this. It's a tiny line between words, and I always forget. Um, dash, dash, okay. So, <laughs> you can subscribe on tinyletter.com slash Miriam dash Navarro dash Prieto. Um, you just write your um, email address on the on that tiny square uh, you wait for the email tiny letter will send you and you click on the confirmation link that will be inside remember to check um, your spam or promotion folders because it just um, goes there sometimes also uh, would you like to take a peek into the previous issues you just have to go to the same website I just told you and write below where you um, write your email address um, it says view letter archive there you can read all my previously all my previously sent issues um, finally do you like what i have to say and you think someone you like might like it and ties them with the jane campbell poem about making things that are not cooking in your girlfriend's kitchen floor in my previous issue anniversary and pride okay hasta pronto